All right, this is Brian Casey here with Touchdown Europe. We are doing uh, our Touchdown Europe podcast, interviewing all the athletes kind of around Europe, uh, you know, how their season going, hear their story and background, and what's their plans for the future. Uh, with me today is a uh, friend of mine, a former teammate, and a guy I'm super proud of and where he's at, Alex Kress. Uh, thank you for joining, my friend. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a little quick background on how Alex and I know each other. We had both played uh, for each other uh, with the Abasos and Crusaders. I played there with two years. Um, we had played in the Regional League and as well in the GFL too. Uh, and then a little time after that, this old man over here decided he was still young, signed a contract with uh, the Robinsburg Razorbacks, and I actually got to see Alex and play against him uh, last year uh, in Robinsburg uh, against the Schwabish Hall Unicorns. Um, Alex is now with the Stuttgart Sur Surge of the ELF, and uh, they're off to you know a great start. Uh, had some bumps here and there, but um, the record uh, uh, does not show that. So uh, Alex, man, really stoked that you're here. And on, if you can, just like, you know, a little bit, give us a uh, kind of a background of where it all started uh, and then now to uh, Stuttgart. Yeah, so like like Brian said, we we met, I think it was 2014 or 15, like with the Abus House Crusaders where I started American football. Um, yeah, I, I played there three years in the youth program. Then I went up to the, to the men's team. Uh, for three years as well, and then I I wanted to uh, try what I how how high or in which high level I I could play like in Europe. So I de yeah I decided to to join the Schwäbisch Hall Unicorns. Um, I had like a test tryout there like in twenty like end of twenty sixteen, and it worked pretty well, I guess. So um, they uh, like to to have me. Uh, then and yeah, since 2017 till last year, I, I played six years for the Schwelbeschall Unicorns and uh, yeah, um, like uh, uh, end of the last year, uh, several guys from the Unicorns they they wanted to join like a team in the ELF and then uh, or yeah, Coach Jordan Newman with Johnny Brenner and Cody Pastorino, these three went to the search and. Uh, yeah, me and other players uh, joined them, and now here we are in the European League of Football. And uh, yeah, it's it, yeah, great to be there. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Good for you. I mean, uh, as mentioning with the Crusaders, and, and I know everyone, especially in Germany, everyone's paths kind of different. Some guys, uh, you know, played uh, soccer or even, uh, as you say, football there, uh, kind of growing up, then transitioned. How did you get started? Like, what made you start to play American football uh, in Germany? Yeah, so I I think I, I I did it very on the German way. I played soccer yeah, <laughs> back in the days, and uh, yeah, then I had like uh, I think since I was twelve, thirteen, I just played uh, the drums uh, like in a uh, music like in a court. Yeah, and uh, yeah, but then when I was 14, 15, I, I searched for, uh, yeah, for a sport again, because I just wanted to do like a sport in my free time. And I, I played a little bit rugby, like in school, there mm -hmm. was like a teacher who played with us a little bit rugby. And that was uh, pretty impressive for me. Um, awesome. Because like, it was a contact sport. And then I pretty I, I really liked it. Uh, so I, at that time when I was 15, I, I tried to find a club uh, here in the area um, and didn't found anything like rugby wise. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I had uh, my ears open and then I heard about like a American football club and I searched a little bit about it and, and it was a contact sport as well, like rugby. So um yeah, then I, uh, yeah, uh, a guy came up to me and, and asked me for a tryout. So uh, it was Thomas Schwarz. Maybe you know him from Abushausen as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so I went with him to like a, a practice and um, 
since day one, I, I really liked that sport and it worked out pretty well. So um, since then, I'm all in. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome, man. Yeah, You've uh, scored in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, um, I know you're not going to say it, but, uh, you know, as I'll tell everyone else on here from playing with you, you uh, it was you were a dominant force. And if I remember, uh, I think our years together was 2016 and 17. Um, and it was from the start knowing that you controlled that D-line and you made plays. You know, we were in the, the regional league, so it was a little bit lesser competition with the players that we had. Definitely, we had yourself, uh, two Americans on defense. Uh, we had, I think, Matt was it, our receiver, who had also played for Schwabish Hall before in the mm -hmm. national team. And then at that time, a young Tim Morovic, uh, just kind of coming up uh, into the Europe scene. So we were kind of firing on all cylinders, and I knew that that was going to be like your kind of path. And so how was that tr tr uh, transition going from Abrasosan, where we were in the regional GFL2, and then up to, at that time, there was no ELF. So the big show of the GFL, and as well, one of the best teams in Europe, Schwabish Hall Unicorns. How does that going from Crusaders to Unicorns? Yeah, it, it was... I, I didn't know at that point what I can do like in that team. Like right. in, with the Schwäbisch Hall Unicorns, there were several national team guys. Right. They played the last three years in the German Bowl. So they were pretty like um, the best team in the South. Mm -hmm. So I, I did not know at that point what I can do there. So, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Um, I just had that one tryout, and I think at that tryout, there was not even the starters there. It was like a tryout, which most of the guys were from the second team. And gotcha. that worked pr pretty uh, pretty well, um, but I knew like there weren't the starters. So, um, yeah, it was everything was new. So, but at that time, I just wanted to know how what I can do like in this right. league or in, right. in that team. Right. So, and I think like it, it was a pretty tough start. I played like against Christian Rote. Now he's like the head coach from Schwäbisch Hall. And back in the days, he was one of the best online guys in, in, in Germany or in Europe. He was several guys, uh, several years, like in the national team. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, at the beginning I had no chance, like at, at the one-on-ones or something like that. But then I, I think I, I had like a hundred percent practice. Um, I was at every practice yeah. and I pretty worked hard and yeah, I, I knew that I'm, I were coming from a lower league and everything, but I just gave everything. Um, I could, uh, yeah, I could. And, uh, yeah, then it was like, I think like 10, 12 weeks into practice. And then I had like a pretty good one-on-one -on -one against Christian. And oh, I was okay. like, yeah, two seconds. Uh, I was at the quarterback and I was like, hey, maybe you can do something here. Yeah. And I think at that point, uh, it really paid off that, uh, yeah, that I was there every practice and practiced hard. And yeah, and from there on, it uh, worked out pretty well for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say so. You know, definitely went to uh, a, a great squad, great coaches. You notice how uh, they kind of do things different there, a little bit more organized and structured. And that kind of that's what produces those wins that you guys uh, occurred because of just the structure, which a lot of other teams that we've seen in Europe kind of lack. And there's there's kind of that reason there's that separation right there. Um, you know, you talk about the transition. Now, being with Unicorns, um, how, how was that time? Like, what, uh, you know, give us a little history for those that don't know the Unicorns, like during your time there, uh, what, how many games you, I mean, uh, how many times did you guys win uh, championships and, and whatnot? How was that experience? Yeah, I, it was awesome. So we had 17, 18, 19, we, or 17 and 18, we, we won every game and yeah. 19 we uh, won every game except the german bowl and i think there we had a, like a stray st uh, streak of i think like 50 games or something we won in a row that was impressive 
but you can also tell like like you told like the structure and like everyone is working hard and we treated every game even when it was like uh, like a, a team who was not on top um, mm -hmm. in the league we still treated every game like it's it's yeah super important and i yeah. think that was like um, super important to win like this streak mm -hmm. uh, in a row and uh, yeah it was fun and uh, yeah like you said the the structure and everything is built off that it yeah yeah it worked out that well and you guys were able to uh because now this is the third year of the elf but uh last year um the unicorns so the second year of the elf you guys were able to kind of keep your structure of the team without too many guys leaving it seemed like um you know everyone started dashing off and signing with the elf but it was the unicorns were able to kind of keep that structure i mean you had Maurice come back um uh, which i definitely remember because i remember hitting him was like hitting a brick wall he was so <laughs> he was so big and heavy but uh, uh and you also had one of the top americans and tyler rutenbeck uh at receiver you had a good quarterback i think who you have this year the same guy uh hennessy i believe yeah um yep. and it was just like you know, playing especially in the South when playing with Robinsburg and the teams we played and then also then playing you guys, it was like it was a night and day difference. So you're able to keep that structure, which um, I mean, you guys, correct me if I'm wrong, won it all last year, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. You played yeah, Post Dam in the championship? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We we won the, the German Bowl and like the Central European Football League uh, yeah. Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I mean, you're able to keep that structure, and then now there comes a transition from the unicorns to the surge. Um, how how has that been? Now now we're talking about you. The GFL was the top. Now it's the ELF. So now you're taking even another step up, where you playing teams like the Ryan Fire, um, teams that are kind of pretty loaded, as well as you guys yourself. But now it's uh, you don't have those. It seems like you don't have those uh, week in, week out of possibly those lesser teams that you might have found in the GFL, and now everyone's good. So how's that? How's that transition been? Yeah, it's crazy. So what I can tell right now about the ELF, like every team is like on a pretty pretty high level. So mm -hmm. we hadn't any game who was like easy. So yeah. We we lost that one game against uh, the Switzerland team. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and that team was like I think like on the in our division like the the lowest rated team. But yeah, uh, they, they beat us like one or two wins, and it was like one of the biggest upsets of the week. Like I remember watching that. Like, whew, how this happened? Yeah. So they were they were ready. Maybe we weren't, or we had not our best day. Mm -hmm. and yeah they beat us and it was they were good so yeah. i really i really like it that like every game is tough right now right so every game you really have to fight for it every game is interesting even for the the people who are looking at it so right. i i really really like it and uh, i think it's the best thing we we can do for the sport that it's like that close mm -hmm. and yeah yeah, and do you feel it, it has been an easy transition um, since you guys have been able to kind of keep that team somewhat, take the players that you have with the Unicorns? I mean, now you have the same head coach. I know uh, Cody went from player to coach. You have mm -hmm. some alignment. You have yourself. You have the quarterback, Riley Hennessy. Um, has that kind of – do you feel like that's aided in your guys' success, being able to keep that nucleus, that core? Yeah, so so we have a a lot of unicorns guys in in Stuttgart right now. But I I would say like it's one third of unicorn guys, one okay. third of uh, Stuttgart guys, and one third of completely new guys from other teams. Right. And yeah, I think it's a pretty good mix. And what I really like um, 
how the scouting and everything, uh, how Jordan, Johnny and Cody are doing that. Like they are recruiting pretty good guys, which are good players and good persons. And I think that is a very important point too, which is uh, very good for a successful for a successful team. Yeah. And yeah, they, they did a pretty good job uh, in that. And yeah, it, it was also that you have... Yeah, you have to, everyone has to be on the same page. For a lot of guys, it was a new playbook and everything. Uh, for me, it was good because we kind of, or most likely played uh, a similar uh, playbook to the year before with the unicorns. And um, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, it, it, I think that was the main topic to like create a new team with new guys and with the Stuttgart guys and with the Unicorns guys together. Yeah. And I think we, so far we did a pretty good job, still a lot to do, but um, yeah, yeah, I think no, I, I, I really like it. <laughs> no, that's great. Do you feel uh, coach Newman, he's been able to keep his same coaching style uh, that he was with the Unicorns to the surge, or have you noticed some kind of differences since he's had to take on, you know, more more talent from all over, um, or has he been kind of the same? I what I really like and what I think like the style he maybe uh, knew or get in touch with in Schwäbisch Hall. Mm -hmm. He he keep kept it uh, in in his coaching style as well, and I think that's like a really really good point. Um, awesome. I, I think it also, um, yeah, we have some, he had some new possibilities to recruit new guys and, um, yeah, guys who are, uh, wanted to join an ELF team because it's like the highest level in Europe right now. And I think like that mix right now is working out pretty good. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> awesome. It, it does. It looks great. One, there was, you know, uh, one that I was surprised that I saw that he didn't uh, join you guys was uh, Tyler uh, Rudenbeck, your uh, receiver. He ended up staying with uh, Unicorns. Um, was that option, do you know, was that option there for him to join the surge? Or was he already having a life going in Schwabish Hall? Or is that something you, you don't really know? So I can, I just can say I don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when I saw like the last game, maybe he just wanted to do like his 100 touchdowns in the GLF. But yeah. I don't really know. I think that was not the main point. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. It, it sh shoot out to him, uh, 100 touchdowns in the GFL. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that is that is that's. I don't that's know what the reason was. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's a huge feat. You know, that's one thing um, is you don't see players playing that long, Americans playing that long in Europe. <laughs> Um, there is some special cases, guys like even maybe myself that just couldn't give it up. <laughs> but there, there a lot of times, you know, it's a couple years or it's two to four years. So for him to get that milestone, I mean, that's huge. And, and definitely congrats to him. Um, so, but uh, uh, now where are we at? We are, the surge is six and two right now, I believe, right? Or is it seven and two? No, it's uh, one. We just lost one game. Just lost I think one. Okay. Six one or seven one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That's cool. Cause I couldn't remember. Yeah. So what, uh, as we know, you know, our goals are the championship, but, uh, what is, you know, how's the rest of the season uh, looking like for you guys? What's, what's the hope? Is it, is it basically just taking that one game at a time and then making it to the playoffs and going from there? So what I really like and what just the plan is like, we are playing the, I hope I can say that right now. We are playing the most important game and it's the next one. Yeah. And I think this inside of everyone's head like is the best what, what we can do. And uh, this is right uh, the message from our coaches to us. And I really like it. And yeah, the most important game is the next one. That's That's fitting perfectly. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you guys are on, on a nice roll. I think you, do you have a bye week this week? Yeah, I think the whole league has a bye week right now because okay. there are some international games. Yeah. Right. That's right. That's right. So bye week this week. And then what's our next game? Uh, we are playing Munich at home. Oh. Okay. And yeah, Munich is pretty good right now. I think yeah. they, they won several games, the, the last several games. 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, still in, so we played in Munich and we won, but mm -hmm. it's a pretty good team, good mm -hmm. players, good playbook, playbook and yeah. yeah, offense and defense, both sides. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to see, the, so to, to match up with this team again. And yeah, it will be a tough game. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely will. I mean, they have a quarterback, Chad Jeffries. He's a guy, actually a former uh, Azusa Pacific. He went to the same college as I did. Uh, so I'm always kind of uh, cheering <laughs> for him a little bit. And then, you know, you got Markel Castle up there with uh, uh, receptions as a receiver. And like you said, just an all-around good team. You know, probably have had some some tough games, but uh, they got a great coach and a good game plan. So, yeah, I'll definitely, definitely be looking forward to that one. You know, and as we're talking about, um, you know, these wins and losses and good competition week in and win it, week out. There has also been, and I'm just curious with your take as a player in the league, and you're with a good team right now, but there's been a lot of blowouts uh, this year. And you could even say your last game, uh, getting to 70-something points, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good amount of points, especially at a top level. And I know we're not putting any other teams down or anything like that, but – what is your take on that? Because there is a lot of blowouts this year. Do you feel maybe the league kind of expanded too fast or is it just kind of the way of football in Europe? So even like this or like our scoreboard from the last game, um, we still were 14 points behind or mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah, Milano, sure. they were up to 14-0 mm -hmm. and uh, – yeah, I think you pretty good. Uh, you you know pretty good how football can be sometimes. Like in the second half, everything changed. Like our defense hold, I think like everything, and mm -hmm. we got uh, we we got zero or Milano got zero points on the board in the second half, and mm -hmm. our offense they they went pretty good, even. Then uh, I think in, in the last three, four drives, we played with our second quarterback and he threw like two touchdowns. Yeah. And uh, there was also like, uh, I think like a field goal, blo a blocked field goal with a uh, return for six. And yeah. I think, yeah, that was the, the reason for this uh, high, high scoreboard yeah. on our side. Um, but otherwise, at the beginning, it was such a tight game as well. So... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it um football is just sometimes um yeah, it can yeah, sometimes things can happen very fast and uh yeah. Right. Right, it's just just kind of the way of the game. No, no, I uh I It hear felt you. not like this high it, yeah. when I played, but uh yeah. That's yeah. football sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, you're definitely right because I watched that game. Uh, um, yeah. A former teammate of mine, Davion Stewart, uh, he uh, plays DB for Milano Seaman. Uh, so always like kind of checking out their games. Um, and even yourself, you've got uh, um, a, the, your quarterback, Keontae Allen, who was with uh, Algoy Comets last year. Um, and he's yeah. done like a nice job of uh, replacing Riley at the moment. Um, so you're kind of, that was great, but yeah, the game was, the game was tight the whole way. Um, and I swear it was about third or middle of third. I got up and I grabbed something to eat and then all of a sudden I come back and then you guys <laughs> had just taken over. But like you said, it, it was a close game all around. So do you like, so, you know, uh, for those who don't know, um, it has always been seen and it's true because of, of the stats and history. You know, Germany and Austria are the countries that kind of produce somewhat of the best football. And it's even true if you're looking at the LF with records. I mean, that's the way it is now. Um, so I think with some of these expansions with teams, it, it, uh, some people are wondering, is it too fast with some of these teams um, where you have the team from uh, team from Hungary or last year with Istanbul and them having to drop out? Um, and this year, even a team from Germany with Leipzig, uh, them having to drop out and then Prague as well uh, was scared or had, was on a scare that they were going to drop out. But then they were able to save themselves. Um, do you like the way the league's going of including more countries or do you feel it could produce better if they start just more centralizing around Germany and, and Austria? 
Yeah, so so for me, it's 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 a pity that a team like Leipzig, who was not that bad, right. like is not not anymore in the league. And See, they had they had great players. You had AJ Wetland, the leading tackler, and yeah. then you're gonna have. Uh, I, I mean, I don't uh, know his name, but the new safety for Milano, who you saw uh, mm-hmm. returning kicks. I, I mean, stud players, and they all played for Leipzig. Yeah, so it was a. A good team. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think there was other reasons why they are not kept uh, going. Right. And I really like that the ELF is expanding and more teams are joining because like, I think like the last two years, no one was counting at Stuttgart as well. And then uh, there was like this year and now Stuttgart is uh, doing much better. Yeah. So and I I think even like a team, um, maybe like the Hungary team, mm-hmm. um, maybe they have a year which is working out uh, much better than Very this true. year. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think like the ELF is, um, yeah, there are good and bad points about the ELF and I can really understand both sides. So I cannot say uh, yes or no. It's... Right. Yeah, but what the ELF right now is, for my opinion, uh, doing pretty good. It's like we have TV games. Um, right. Like um, the level is super high, mm-hmm. um, and like a lot of teams are on the same level, and yeah, they are creating like and making this sport um, better in Germany and Europe. And mm-hmm. they are like a lot of fans are going into the stadiums, and that is what I like. And like that is uh, growing up the sport, and I think that is like a very very good point. And yeah. but yeah, I can like there are some bad points as well, and I can also understand them. But I right. think like in general, you can say like it's growing the sport, and it's that is a, a very good point. That's true. That's the main thing because you know I started in. 2011 in Europe and now it's 2023 and to see the growth during this whole years of a decade or more um, it, it's grown dramatically uh, where back then the only the really main thing that we had was the Euro Bowl or the big six so taking the six best, best teams and all playing each other always being either you know the New Yorker Lions, Strawbridge Hall, Berlin Adler and and all those teams back then. Uh, so now to have this league where you have just tons of teams and tons of talent, no, it's uh, it's definitely uh, for the up and up. Now, one thing that there has been happening a lot uh, that a lot of people um, just wonder, is this best for the league, uh, which I know you've probably seen, but the surge haven't really done, is a lot of hiring and firing. Like a lot of, all right, it's week two, uh, maybe this guy isn't in the top five passing, so he's released. Or, all right, we are one and so, or two and so, and a head coach gets fired. Now, there might be more behind the scenes than, than we know, because um, there's always two sides to every story. But what's your take on that? Do you feel like it's a little bit too much hiring, firing? Or, or do you feel like this is just the way of the game and it's just all up to each organization. Yeah. So, so I think like at that level, there are sometimes some good reasons why you have to hire maybe a new quarterback or fire someone, or I don't know. And like, even like in uh, Algoi Komet, Schwäbisch Hall or other, or Albushausen, it happened as well. But in yeah. the ELF right now, it's it's such a media um, leak, and yeah, you can really see it. So it happened uh, in the GFL as well, but it was not uh, that much public. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So in in general, I think like in some teams, it's a little bit too much, um, mm-hmm. and I think yeah, some teams are not doing a pretty good job with that, but some teams they are doing a a good job with it and they are just like wanted to change small things and i think that's that's like okay we also had some problems with with injured players or something and we are 
hired or fired some some players as well yeah. but i think so like what what i really like to find a way to not like we also have some injured guys still in stuttgart and they are still with us even when they are not playing and i think like you just have to find a way um yeah you're treating players good you're treating coaches good and i really since right now i really like that how it's it's going on in in stuttgart and yeah. Yeah, i'm i'm super glad that i am playing for such a team which is uh, everyone treating uh, super respectful yeah. and yeah i could not imagine uh, playing for teams which are doing a bad job with that yeah no and i, I think you i think you made a very good point um is you know, it happened. It did happen in the GFL, but it wasn't as publicized as it is with the ELF. I think that's one thing the EFL, ELF does right is is they really produce a lot on social media, um, and they really get a lot of content out there. So it really catches your eyes and brings people to the game. It's a it's an attractive league, but uh, the one thing with that is they're putting everything out there, which everyone wants to know all that information with the GFL. <laughs> The one thing that it's still lacking um, is uh, just getting that information out there, staying on top of stats, staying on top of, you know, uh, um, um, news and information. Um, and you're right. I think I think uh, it's just a little bit more publicized now um, in the ELF. So that's a, that's a very good point. Um, and you guys do, you know, it, you could tell that um, I think you had a player last year with Schwabish Hall, um, uh, Smith, American. And he, uh, uh, against us, against Robinsburg, he hurt his leg. I think he tore his ACL. And you kept him all year long and, uh, you know, rehabbed him, got him back to where he's at. And now he's playing great with the unicorns right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just a testament to the organization and to coaches alike. Because there's other organizations where you hear the sad stories where they might tear their Achilles or something and then they're cut and released. And it's like, that's not right. Yeah, I think a lot of organizations are not doing a pretty good job with that. And like the unicorns, they understood how how do it on a respectful way and on a good way. And I um, like uh, the coaching staff in, in Stuttgart is uh, doing kind of the same right now or doing yeah. the same right now. And yeah. I think that's super important. Um, but yeah, it's a pity that some teams uh, don't have that respectful way. But right. yeah. Yeah, is what it is. Uh, but so, all right. Now, you're on a bye this week. Most are around the league on a bye. Now, you're getting into game week. Can you take us through a game week being a player for the Stuttgart Surge? Uh, like, what is your practice schedule like? Like, how many practices do you have a week? Meetings and so on and so forth. Like, uh, for guys to understand what, you know, kind of the structure looks like in Europe and now, especially in the ELF, what, is, what does a game week look like for you guys? from Monday to game day. Yeah. So right now our game weeks are, we are practicing uh, Wednesday and, and Friday. Yeah. And uh, most of the time our games are on Sunday right now. And uh, then we are doing Saturday morning, like a walkthrough. And then uh, we have the game on, on Sunday. So that's, okay. so we have three practices um, or yeah, two practices and that walkthrough and then on Sunday, the game. Nice. Do you guys yeah. have like a, a position meetings, um, defensive like meetings, like kind of throughout the week, or is everything done online, um, or or how does that kind of work, or is everything kind of taken care of at practice? Yeah, so I think early in the season we had a lot of, uh, so we had some meetings uh, before, like the day before practice as well. So mm -hmm. right now um, we are doing a lot of uh, oh, uh, in in huddle. We are uh, get noticed every every practice mm -hmm. and I think that's a super important thing and I pretty like it because I yeah I can uh, watch my notes uh, whenever I want or when I'm yeah, able awesome. to and that uh, gives me uh, yeah um, yeah I'm super flexible um, right. with that so I can do it when I have time and that's super super good and I, I really like that um, yeah awesome. I heard about other teams they are doing like the day before practice um, a meeting for like two hours and I think it's not that successful and I think you really can use the time uh, much better in in that way how we are doing it 
No, that's awesome. No, I, I completely agree with you. The best way is just to be efficient, um, you know, keep it in a professional manner, especially if you look at the NFL, you know, they're only practicing a few days. I mean, they're out there every day, but their actual level of intensity is really only yeah. a couple of days, even if that, you know, because at this level, once you get to this time, it's all about game day. It's all about making it to Saturday or Sunday, preserving the players. Everyone knows how to play. Everyone knows the techniques now. Now it's just fine tuning the little things. No, that's great. So how is uh, how is this uh, set up in Stuttgart? They, do you have do you have to have your own place or do they set you up um, or is it kind of half and half or or how's it how's it look for yourself? Oh, uh, could you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, no, it's all right. No, what? Uh, how is your living situation and benefits in Stuttgart? Are um, are you having to commute from your home? Or do they have you set up like as a player in like this apartment building or, or what, what does it look like? So like like for me, um, I'm living like 45 minutes away from Stuttgart and uh, I'm driving every practice uh, by car. Gotcha. Um, I think uh, like most of the guys are doing it like that. Um, even some guys, they have a longer ride um, um, or some some guys are coming by train. Um, yeah, there are a few guys like the American imports or some EU imports. They have uh, apartments in in Stuttgart. Um, um, yeah, but otherwise, I think most most of the team is traveling uh, by by car or by train to the practices. Oh, that's awesome! Uh, that's great, man. Yeah, that's great. What uh, you know? And so you've got these these uh, um, you know you're de- down to about three practices a week. You got the game day. You do have bye weeks, so it gives you some time kind of to yourself as well. What is uh, time on your own like kind of look like? What's your hobbies like work schedule? Are you having to, you know, be going from work to playing or, or, or how's it look like? Uh, like in a bye week or in a game? Or, week? Or just like in general, you know, what's your hobbies kind of away from football? What do you do when you're not with the surge, basically? Yeah. So I think like, um, yeah, like family and friends are super important for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like to spend time with, with my family and my friends and, uh, I still got grandparents. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah, I have super good friends and I think that is also what I'm, uh, yeah, super happy when, yeah, when, when friends away from football, uh, yeah. when they're asking about my, my football career or something. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, for me, it's very important to also, um, like have friends uh, like outside of football and I think it's very important um, to have that and I still have s- some friends from school and uh, yeah so yeah. Um, I like to spend uh, yeah time with those I, I, I also like to spend time um, with myself to go for a walk or something like um, I'm, I'm living right next to the nature I'm, I'm walking okay. there sometimes in the evening just for an hour and yeah Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. No, that, no that's great. That's great. And uh, so, Alex, how, how old are you now? Uh, 28. 28. All right. What, Still young. Uh, what? <laughs> Still young. <laughs> yeah, you sure are, man. Ten, ten years younger than me. But uh, <laughs> all right. So, so 28, what does the future, your career with football look like for Alex? How, how, how long would we like to go with this game? What, what are we... What what does our future look like? Yeah, so, so I'm thinking like like our games right now from game to game. I'm thinking about season to season as well. So yeah. I think like sometimes if you have a, a bad injury or something is happening or I don't know, it really can change very very fast. But sure. uh, yeah, that's why I'm thinking from season to season. But I'm super happy. I yeah i'm i'm super glad that i'm not get injured that often or i never had a serious injury uh, in football so i'm super happy and glad about that and yeah when i'm staying healthy and uh, yeah i would really like to play uh, on uh, on the top level of europe uh, for some more years and i really could imagine that i'm playing yeah. um since uh, 32 35 i don't know so yeah, you you never know. I'm thinking from year to year, but when I'm staying healthy and everything is working out, and uh, like my family and friends are on my back, and uh, yeah, then I I could imagine that I'm playing 
yeah, for several more years. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good, man. That's good. And, and, and you should, you know, I think, I think you made a good point. I think sometimes we get ahead of ourselves. We have that five-year plan. We have that 10-year plan, which is great. <laughs> But in all honesty, it, it is good to to kind of, you know, appreciate each day, um, enjoy like where we're at, enjoying the moment, because sometimes when you get too far ahead of yourself, you start stressing out and you're trying to make things, you're trying to make each chapter of your book perfect. When, like you said, you know, an injury can happen or this and it kind of can change plans. And it's like, all right, you know, it's 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 been a good ride or it's been fun. And but now it's time for something else. But uh, no, that's awesome. Uh, really, uh Really happy, you know. It, it, it as we kind of uh, slowly wind down. Um, it was really great, beneficial. Uh, wanting to have you on here because um, I think it's great. You've basically gone through all the levels of Europe. You've gone from regional GFL two GFL and now to the ELF, and with notable teams. You know, um, Crusaders won the that regional league that that year. The next year was kind of kind of a tough year, especially in the second division. And then, uh, you know, the success you had with the Unicorns and with the Surge as well um, is is very impressive. And, and there's no reason not to keep going, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. W what I also like about my career um, that I came up from a lower league team and yes. was fighting through through the to the to the GFL and out in, into the ELF and uh, yeah I I really like uh, my style of career I, I I think it's not super typical I I think it's more common because some other lower league guys they are trying to um, make that move as well and it's like mm -hmm. super impressive and I I like when someone wants to know how it is like on top level and yeah, yeah but. Like the, the last years I played a lot with teams, they they were in a youth program with a GFL team and then they went up to the men's team. Um, but yeah, both uh, ways are working and uh, that was my way. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. You know, and and, and what is your, you know, if I could ask, what, uh, where do you see football in Europe going from here? Do you feel that with the ELF and such, it's on the right path? Um, or do you think a little bit more needs to be done, maybe more with financial, um, of being able more teams, you know, having that financial backing, um, so maybe they can hire, um, not that it's needed, you know, we're growing the sport, but also maybe hire another American, maybe someone, uh, you, you know, you get more Americans on the squad. What do you think it needs, football in Europe needs to bring more to the table to, to get to that really high professional level and compete with a Canadian league or, or possibly one day of the hopes of, of a league like the NFL or something. Yeah. So what I really like about the ELF right now is that they are um, like uh, ma maximum the the US players and the European players because that uh, really uh, gives the teams um, like uh, or get them to know that that they have to find like good German players. And yeah. I yeah, I I really like that and yeah, I think also the league is creating. Um, yeah, the, the league has no no own youth program, but I mm -hmm. think like the population and everything, what the league is doing right now, um, gives uh, young kids um, like the interest to go into clubs like to mm -hmm. to Schwäbisch Hall or all other youth programs. And I hope that um, with with that, like all the youth programs are growing as well. Right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, financial wise, I hope the, yeah, I don't know if, if it, it was that in Leipzig, like if it was the financial, I, I don't really know, but right. I, I hope like it, like every team will get a, a solid stand and, uh, that, yeah, this is not a problem or they create problems or I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really like what the ELF is doing right now with social media wise and everything and it grows the sport. And, uh, yeah, I, I really hope that like on a solid basic, it will grow maybe a little bit and uh, constantly. Um, yeah. And I hope not a lot of teams will le left the ELF or something like that. And, uh, right. And I think that can uh, really good. Uh, that can be a really good program and plan and league and yeah. 
Yeah, I could imagine that it that it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I th I think you made I think you made also a good point uh, a while ago um, uh, in, in this interview that you had mentioned. You know, sometimes it takes a year or two for teams to get going, and I think we are we're too quick as a society to be like, well, what's good now? Uh, we want everything like right now. So if it's not working right now, then it must be bad and they're done with or, or whatever. Um, so I think, I think you made a great point with that. I think, uh, you know, cause a team like, uh, uh, uh Milan who, um, uh, has shown some great strength. They got some great players. Uh, but you know, they unfortunately only have one win, uh, at the moment, but you know, next year I can see it totally being different. Or you go from last year, a team that was surprising, like the Barcelona dragons that no one mm -hmm. thought would make a run and then they make a run. So, and you know, then they're now going to be adding a team in Madrid for next year and kind of all over. So I think, I think that was a very wise and good point that, you know, sometimes you just got to let it build. Um, and maybe the organization where it's at now, they don't might have the right coaches or, or GM or president, but maybe next year they will, and they will add those right pieces. So uh, I thought that was a good point. I wanted to commend you, but uh, you know, uh, really, I really appreciate you being on here. Uh, it's one, it's great to catch up with you. I think last year we saw each other really quick and it was after you guys blow, blew us out. <laughs> so I wasn't trying to talk too much, but uh, uh, it's great seeing you, man. Uh, I'm really, you know, from, from friend to friend, really proud of you and, and to what you're doing um, and, you know, really keep it up. You know, you got this bye week this week. And then getting ready for uh, for Munich uh, mm -hmm. in two weeks. Yeah, good luck to yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, hey Brian, thank you very much. It was also a pleasure for me to talk with you again. And uh, yeah, I think uh, after after the game <laughs> last year, we hadn't too much time to talk a little bit. And yeah. therefore, this uh, yeah was pretty fun to yeah. catch up with you again. So thank you very much for that opportunity. Really appreciated it. Yeah, man. Gr great having you on here. Um, again, this is Brian Case with Touchdown Europe. We were very fortunate to interview uh, Alexander Kress of uh, the Stuttgart Surge, a uh, longtime player uh, in Germany and looking forward to a great rest of his career. My friend, thank you and I wish you a great rest of your day. Same for you. Thank you, man. Right, man. Ciao. Good luck. Thank you.